All right, I want to talk to you today about five reasons that the rapture, better known as the catching up, might not be soon or might not be as soon as we're thinking. Now, I don't know. The Bible, the King James Bible, gives no time for the catching up of the body of Christ when we get called up to be with the Lord. Um, it's going to be a rapturous event, so I don't have a problem calling it rapture. Rapture is not a Bible term. I get it. I've been over it many times. But I put that in the title. People know what I'm talking about. Some people don't understand the catching up. They might be newly saved. They hear rapture. They say, oh, yeah, I've heard that. So that's why I'm doing this. But a lot of people say, well, I think, man, it's just going to be any day now. It just has to be. Things are shaping up. Well, I hope you're right. I feel the same way. I hope, I hope the Lord doesn't leave us here much longer. But I have been looking into a lot of different things here, and I just think to myself, there are some things that are not here yet that will have a part in that time of Jacob's trouble. And if we get called up and boom, Antichrist shows up shortly thereafter, because um, it doesn't look like there's much interval there if you study the issue. Body of Christ goes up, Antichrist is going to show up shortly thereafter. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be years after. Um, I think in the ensuing chaos after the catching up happens, I think the Antichrist is going to come to power shortly in that time period. So, um, but there's a bunch of different things, five different things I'm going to list that might actually mean that the rapture isn't going to be for a while yet. And the reason I'm saying this is because of the, the whole rapture bailout mentality. Uh, well, things are bad and, and I'm in debt and I'm unhealthy and I have bad relationships and I'm this and I'm that. So, But who cares because the Lord's going to catch us up any time now and I won't have to worry about it. Um, that's really not the best way to think of things. And the way that we need to look at the future is um, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Okay. Your life is, for to me to live, is Christ. You're living for Jesus Christ, in other words. He leaves you here on this earth. It's because He has work for you to do. He has some task for you to do yet. Uh, your time isn't up yet, in other words. Okay? Number one. The one first reason why we might be here a little while longer is the mark Mark of the Beast technology is not ready to implement yet. Okay, I'm going to give you some proof of that. Technology. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Tech give me my eraser here. I'll be right back here in a minute. <laughs> technology. Okay. Mark of the Beast technology. Okay, got it right that time. <laughs> Only took me a little bit there, but all right. I have written down here. I'm not going to put a link to the video. You can look it up yourself. Um, November 20th, uh, excuse me, November 30th, 2015, the Carrillo Gantner Theater, University of Melbourne, Dr. Devra Davis, D E V R A, Devra, not Debra, Devra. Davis. Um, she's the president of the Environmental Health Trust, visiting professor of medicine, Hebrew University, Hadassah Medical School, Andukaz Mayus University Medical School. She's got a whole bunch of credentials and whatever else. And she did a video on the dangers of uh, cell phones and wireless type of things and whatever else. Um, and it was a pretty good lecture. I, I you know, was, I mean, it, it's pretty good for the most part. Um, I had a few issues with it, and I think one of the worst was she's showing, you know, that there's proof that cell phone is cell phones are definitely causing increased levels of heat in the body and whatever else, which can lead to cancer down the road. And you know, she's showing these charts and people holding a cell phone up, and, and how the the heat, the you know, the infrared heat goes into the head and and everything. And there's people that are holding up their cell phones and taking pictures, and I'm just thinking, oh, don't you people get it, <laughs> you know? Here, here's the danger of a cell phone. Oh, let me use my cell phone to take a picture. But whatever. <laughs> she said, okay, that right now um, there are 6 billion cell phones in the world. This was 2015, almost five years ago. 6 billion cell phones and 8 billion wireless transmitting devices. In this seminar or this lecture, she said, 8 billion wireless transmitting devices, okay? 
but more than 50 billion wireless transmitting devices are anticipated, needed in other words, to form the Internet of Things. Okay, now again, if you're studying any of this 5G stuff, they eventually want to roll out 6G, but they're not ready for 5G unless it's in some major cities and whatever else. Um, now you could make the argument. You could say, well, I think that they'll just do 5G in the major cities and do Agenda 21, move people out of the, the country areas, move them into compact cities. That could be there. But they still, they're still doing trials and tests and whatever with 5G. All right, uh, 5G, if you don't understand it, is a, is a millimeter wave technology. It was originally created by the Israeli army as a weapon for crowd control. It's a very short type of wave, but very, very high frequency, very powerful. So to be able to have total automation where the cars are uh, running without drivers and machines are working in robotic this and robotic that, they need to have really fast, really powerful internet. And of course, for the mark of the, based, mark of the beast interface, where you have a chip in your hand or in your forehead, just like the Bible predicted would happen, and that's working and, and you're just able to get the internet wherever you're looking. You know, I've done videos on this where they show what they're planning with the internet of things, where it's monitoring your health signs and you know, you can just just stop and I, I, uh, I need this here and you can just be going like this and whatever else, you know, uh, with your, you don't even need Google glasses, I guess. It's just your brain chip interface with the internet of things. We're not ready for that. So catching up happens. Body of Christ gets caught up. Boom, up we go. Oh, well, they're, the Antichrist is just going to show up and they're going to be ready to implement the mark of the beast. I don't think so. Okay. You say, well, three and a half years in, okay, well, can they really get it done in three and a half years with all the chaos and everything else? I doubt that. I doubt that very highly. Uh, point number two, another reason why the rapture might not be as soon as many people think. Just trying to prepare you. Okay, don't, don't put all your, all the, the, the catching ups happen so I don't have to think about getting ready for the future and, and fighting things that are coming and whatever else. Just trying to get you ready in case it doesn't happen. Right? Don't start thinking September 23rd, 2020. Oh, and let me line up the date and whatever else. I'll, I'll try to get ahead of, of fake or break or, you know, and I'll come out September 23rd, 2020. Whatever. <laughs> Setting dates. Um, but secondly, okay, point number two, why it might not be as soon as many people are thinking, is uh, the economic slash dollar collapse. Okay. Um, the American dollar is still viable. It's still there. Uh, they're still, the stock market is limping along and they're, they're doing bailouts and their unemployment and all this other stuff and forbearance with the real estate and whatever. You don't have to make any payments in other words for a while. Um, they're limping the economy along again, Catching up happens. The dollar is still there. Is the Antichrist system really going to be ready to kick in right away after that? No. No. We could be here to see the collapse of America. What did Christians do in the past? Say, oh, no, no, we won't be here, brother. You can be sure we won't be here. Really? There were Christians around when the Roman Empire fell. There were Christians around to watch the... Reformation years and a lot of the countries and things and, and uh, in Europe especially, a lot of the wars and fighting and everything else. And this was Prussia and now this is, this got changed and this was, this country got taken over by that country. And this now this, this guy was your king yesterday. Now this guy's your king today and whatever. Christians have gone through that, right? Christians went through the Great Depression. Think about it. We could go through some rough stuff. Number three, this is a big one, the temple in Jerusalem. They're not ready for that yet. They're getting ready. They're doing all the, the red calf and, you know, perfecting the Levitical priesthood, you know, stuff and trying this out and trying that out and whatever else. But there has to be a temple in Jerusalem. Let me show you the scripture on that. You can turn in your Bible to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. 
That temple has to be there. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 says, talking about the son of perdition there, the Antichrist, the man of sin, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, it's not some kind of a figurative, symbolic type of thing. No, you know, he's sitting in the temple of God. All right, he calls it the sacrifice and oblation to cease. All these different prophecies and all these wingnuts out there, they'll come out and they'll say, well, the temple is actually your body. And so technically, you know, no, he's sitting in a temple on a throne, showing himself that he is God. The only man that does that is the Pope, right? So the Pope, the papal um, whole system is there, and they're already kind of doing this whole thing, but the temple of God hasn't been rebuilt yet. It's going to be rebuilt in Jerusalem. Now you can say the Dome of the Rock, or they're going to build it over here or over there, whatever, but there is no temple right now. And I would say, you know, okay, catching up happens. We go up. Somehow they can implement 5G, Mark of the Beast technology, somehow they can get rid of the dollar. But what about the temple in Jerusalem? You say, well, he doesn't sit in that thing until halfway through. Okay, can they build a temple in three and a half years? Ew. Um, I would say it's far more likely that World War III is going to hit. And we could see that thing. Remember, they're saying here, um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 is the next one. I'm getting ahead of myself. Number four. War. What about war? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. People are calling for peace and safety. Now, there's really not that many people calling for that right now, per se. But you have World War III, where the death tolls are starting to get up into the millions, like the other two world wars. All of a sudden, um, people might be tempted to start crying for peace and safety and ready to accept a man that looks like Jesus Christ that's coming to power and heads the Catholic Church and says, that's enough, we need to bring, you know, I'm going to restore world peace. And the way we're going to do it is just to get rid of the dissidents. You know, understand, I just have to get rid of the heretics and... So, you know, we're going to have to go forth, do a little conquering and to conquer. But, you know, but it's going to be peaceful after that. Don't you worry. <laughs> yeah. But uh, how about that? We get called up soon. Come up hither. Up we go. Antichrist shows up. I'm here to bring peace. Well, it's not really that bad. You see what I'm saying? So, brother, I, I just don't think the Lord's going to let us go through it. He let Christians go through World War I, World War II, Vietnam, all the other wars and things. How about the Civil War? How about the Revolutionary War? How about the English Civil War back in the 17th century? How about this war, that war? All these different wars. Jerusalem gets sacked in 70 AD. Destroyed. The original temples destroyed. Hmm. They saw it. They went through it. Christians were tortured for centuries. But don't worry, because we're just going to get caught up and then it's just going to be all over. I don't know. I mean, I'm never going to go back on the, the catching up being before the time of Jacob's trouble. That's not what this is about. It's just about, you know, a lot of these guys are just, they're practicing this rapture bailout thing, this, this easy believism kind of a deal where it's just going to be, uh, up we go, and America just gets preserved until then. Well, huh? I don't know. Um, I actually had a brother in the Lord, a graduate of Pensacola Bible Institute, older man, and um, and he told me, he said, that he said, I've always believed that the church is going to come full circle on when the rapture happens. It's going to be back to the way it was in the first century. What was the church in the first century? They were hiding in houses because of the fear of the Jews and the Romans. Because the Jews and the Romans were connected, which I've been preaching for years. Zionist Jews and fascist Catholics, right-wing fascist Catholics. They're the ones in power. I've been preaching that for years. People get all upset at me and whatever else. Not like I care. But, you know, there's the power structure. And um, both those groups 
in reality, they can't stand believers. It breaks my heart to think of how much the rabbis hate Jesus Christ and hate those who follow Jesus Christ. And pre-Vatican II Catholics, they feel just the same. Those two groups were persecuting the early Christians. Hey, by what authority do you have to preach these things? Who sent you out here to do this? We're going to put you in prison. We're going to flog you. We're going to publicly whip you. We're going to... You see? Could it get to that point? I mean, you know, right now, I wouldn't step in a church building if my life depended on it. But what happens when they crank it up to the next level of persecution? Where you're forced to go. Hmm. I'm not going. What are you going to do? Meet privately in homes? Hmm. But there's number five, and this one's really bad. Okay, this is, a, this is one that really convinces me that we could be here for a little while yet. Number five. See, I have, have it written here. <clears throat> American Jews back to Israel. I said this years ago in a Bible study when we had our house church meeting, and I remember I actually said it to this older brother that was from PBI, and, and, um, and I said, uh, you know, I think that it could go a little while yet before the catching up of the body of Christ. And um, we got to talking about it, and I said, there's a lot of Jews here in America, and they don't want to leave America. Hey, go on back there to Israel. Get shot at over there? I don't think so. All these Muslim countries encircling us and things, and they all want to kill us, and they're all trying to get us? Mm, nah, business is good. Um, yeah, there was another group of Jews that did the same thing. Uh, very wealthy Jews in uh, Germany. And then there was a the Holocaust. And all of a sudden, those Jews wanted to go back to Israel, the ones that survived. And you get somebody that's a Holocaust denier, you know, Wicked devil. No, oh, the numbers. I don't care if the numbers were, were messed with or whatever. What, how many people died in this? It doesn't even matter to me. Jews were killed in that thing. What's the exact number? No idea. I have no idea. But Jews were killed. How do I know? Well, take Rabbi Ben David Liu. They got saved. He told the truth. He went through those camps. His relatives were killed. But I'm supposed to believe somebody that's uh, just young and whatever else. And they've read a bunch of Catholic nonsense that said, oh, we didn't kill anybody there. You know, oh, excuse me, I met the Nazis. Oh, not the Catholics. Oh, because Catholics and Nazis are, are, you know, they were opposed to each other. Yeah, just don't think about the uh, concordant with uh, Pope Pius XII and uh, Franz von Papen that was signed before the war. That we just won't talk about that. And let's not talk about the Ustashi, the Catholic Ustashi and Yugoslavia and the, and the destruction of the Serbian, Serbian Orthodox people and the we just won't talk about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Um, some bad things happened to those Jews over there in Germany. They didn't want to leave. Hey, um, Israel is your land, Jew. You don't belong here. You need to go back to Israel. Ah, are you kidding me, man? We're here in New York. There's as many Jews in New York right now as there are in Israel, if I remember correctly, if I remember the statistic correctly. There's Jews in California. There's Jews, you name it. Most states have Jews. Um, what's going to happen to those Jews when the right-wing fascist movement really kicks into high gear and they wipe out Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter and Antifa? And all of a sudden, all those radical Catholics with their hate that has been bottled up for all those years, all of a sudden they are told, uh, hey, those Jews did this and those Jews are behind the media and those Jews messed up your currency and those Jews did this and it, they're going to turn their guns right on those Jews. There's going to be another Holocaust here in America. There will be. But what happens if the body of Christ leaves right now? Antichrist shows up. Well, you know, I guess technically they, they could still persecute the Jews and, and everything else, and the Jews could flee back to, you know, Israel and, and whatever. Sure. And by the way, if you want the proof of, of the Jews being gathered back to the land of Israel, 
You can read Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 21 through 24 is really good. The whole chapter of Ezekiel chapter 36 is the proof that God is not done with the Jews and that God actually brings them back because of His promises, for His name's sake. Let's, let's actually go there. Because this is very important, the, the replacement theology, Satanist, Catholic, devils, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> um, they won't go here. They'll tell you that uh, everything about the Jews has already been fulfilled. God's done with them. He's turned his attention to the church. Uh, not true. Ezekiel 36, verse 21. But I had pity for mine holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whither they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, I do not this for your sakes. Hmm. O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among the heathen and, will gather, and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Oh, that happened in the Old Testament there. It happened before Jesus showed up. They weren't in all countries. There's a gathering coming of those Jewish people. There's a lot of them in America. They, got to have to, they have to go back to Israel. And they aren't going to all be going back, by the way. Because a lot of them are going to get buried. They're going to get killed before they can go back to Israel. Because of their stubbornness. So, um, you say, well, that could all happen after we get caught up. Well, I hope so. I hope so. Um, if the Lord comes to me and says, "Hey," uh, gives me a uh, says, "I'm going to answer one prayer," you get one prayer request. I'll answer it, you know, like that immediately. Say, "Come up hither." Let's go. I'm hoping for the catching up of the body of Christ. I'm hoping for the rapture. It will be a joyous, rapturous event. I can't wait for it. But. What's happening is a lot of these preachers out there are giving people a false hope. They're saying not that the preacher of rapture or post, you know, the, uh, not post, the uh, catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. That's not false. That's not the false hope I'm talking about. What they're doing is they're just saying, don't fight what's going on. Don't look at the world and say, man, I'm, I might have to go survive for a number of years yet here. Um, I really am going to get persecuted. Persecution's coming. Oh, brother, that's good. The, the rapture's almost here. He's going to be coming soon. You know, and I've seen a couple of these false guys and they'll come out um, and they'll say, um, you know, if the vaccine's coming in the fall, then I know I'm going to be raptured first. Amen. I don't have to worry about the vaccine. Chapter and verse. The rap th this vaccine that's coming with this, this whole uh, Operation Warp Speed, this let's get this coronavirus stupid vaccine. You need to be vaccinated for a disease that you could get and you don't even know that you got it and you got over it and you had it, but you know, stupid. <laughs> Uh, vaccines are satanic anyways, but that's another story that will be preached in the future. Um, but to say, oh, this vaccine, it's the mark of the beast because it's got this some of this luciferase and stuff in it, and it's got the, it's connected with the whole house bill 6666, uh, you know, and it, so it's the mark of the beast. No, the beast has to be here, and people have to worship the beast and his image and take his mark. There's three parts to it, all right? And the beast, when he shows up, he shows up. A little while later, the false prophet shows up and the dragon. So there's a trinity on the earth that people are, are worshiping. Okay, so, uh, you know, those things haven't happened yet. All right, and, and uh, excuse me, I'm trying to, I'm thinking of something else there. But, you know, the whole thing is this, this vaccination, it's not the mark of the beast. Preparatory for it, getting people ready for it, sure, yeah, absolutely. But it's not the mark of the beast. So a lot of these guys that are coming out and they're saying, you know, brother, if that rapture, if the uh, if the vaccine comes out in the fall, brother, we'll be gone before then. You can't say that for sure, okay? If it was the mark of the beast, yes, you could say that, but it's not the mark of the beast, and you might have to say no to the vaccine. You might lose your job come this fall. Are you ready for that? Say, well, brother, I just think it's coming soon. Well, I hope so. I hope so. But there's five things here. There's probably more I haven't even gone over, but there's five things right there. 
those things are going to take some time to implement. We might be here for a few more years, you know. So just, just trying to say, get yourself ready. Because you're a young person or whatever else and things, don't just say, well, rapture's going to happen. I'm not going to bother getting married. I'm not going to try to get out on my own or I'm not going to try to fix up my health or I'm not going to try to get rid of the rock music or the video games or the whatever. We might be here for a while. I don't know. But just felt I really needed to put this thing out there because I'm seeing a lot of disinformation and I think that there's going to be people that get very disillusioned. You know, again, I think one of Satan's greatest tactics was the thing of date setting because, man, it's going to be New Year's Eve. When it goes from 1999 to 2000, that's going to be the rapture. It's going to happen. I remember back in 1993 they were saying it because 93 is the rapture, then you get seven years for the tribulation, and then it starts the millennial kingdom. And, and everybody was kind of waiting in 1993, and I was, I was a junior in high school at that point. And um, it's going, oh, it's going to happen. And, you know, if it did, I would have been left behind because I was not saved. But, you know, it's going to happen. And, you know, and I remember it was December 31st, you know, you're kind of looking at the clock. And it's going to, you know, okay, here it is, midnight. Oh, that didn't happen. Hmm. And then, you know, the year 2000. And then, oh, well, we kind of blew it then. Well, maybe it's going to be the year 2011. And oh, then it's going to be 2013. And, the, oh, look at the blood moons. The blood moons are lining up. <gasps> it's happening. Failure, 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 failure. And all of a sudden, the people start saying, maybe he's not coming back. I don't think he's going to come pre-trib. I think the church has to be here to go through the... And then they fall away. If we have to be here to see a lot of this stuff come in, it might be another five, ten years. I don't know. I mean, this generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. Matthew 24. Yeah, I get it. But that could be the generation that was born in 1945. Or no, it's kind of not 45. 48, excuse me, when Israel became a nation. 1948. I was thinking of the United Nations. <laughs> uh, no, Israel became a nation in 1948. Um... They could, you know, could it be that that generation won't pass? Meaning that generation that was born in the year 1948, there will still be some of those alive. What if they live to be 100 years old? Everything's fulfilled by 2048. Another 28 years. I don't know. I don't know. But whatever happens... You need to be serving the Lord. I need to be serving the Lord. Don't just think, well, the, the, you know, the Lord's coming back, so I don't need to think about the future. You need to think about the future. I'm sure it seemed like the end of the world back in World War I for the believers back then, back in World War II. A lot of the other big things that went on, and you have you know, people sitting by the radio and listening to the names coming back of the men who died Thousands and thousands every day killed in war. I'm sure that the families were there and watched, looked out the windows. Here comes a car, it's turning in the lane. Oh no. And sure enough, it's from the military and the guy gets out and he's got the folded up flag and they think, oh, I'm sure it seemed like the end of the world for them. Saying 1944, boy, what a year to remember. We lost our son, and we lost our, our my my brother's, you know, nephew, my my nephew, and you know his son, and and we lost uncle so and so, and this and that. Boy, it's got to be Lord's got to be come back soon, and you know, people probably thought that stuff back then. Sixty years ago, not quite sixty years ago. Lived to be old. Just a challenge, brethren. That's all this is. Don't give up faith that the Lord is going to catch us up. Certainly. But uh, don't give up on your life either. Don't just say, He's coming, so it's a bailout. We're getting out of here. I don't have to think about my future or whatever else. You need to think about your future. And whatever time the Lord has us here, whatever He puts us through or allows us to go through, um, you need to serve Him without uh, backing down. And if the vaccination comes out, you say, I'm not taking it. Well, we're going to line you up outside here and shoot you. 
Oh, absent from the body, present with the Lord. Whatever. I'm not taking the vaccine. I'm not going to allow you to put that poison in me. So that is going to be it. Like I said, I hope it's a challenge to you. Thank you for watching.